sustenance and tea to be precise. I think it was one of those Battle of Deborah meetings at Oriental. A small meeting like this, about 20 people, even less, maybe 15. I remember so clearly, Pastor Lisi and Pimo were there. You know, somebody had said, Oh, they just, I just met Pia once at the time. You know, I was going to the tribe, but I just met her one time. And someone was like, Oh, I should go for the meeting. And I just thought, mm, I beg, they've come again, you know. Um, but I'm going to the gym. When I went to the gym, the Holy Spirit just said, go for this meeting. I thought, well, I'm wearing like trainers and leggings and t-shirts and a face cap. I looked very haggard, if you had seen me that day. But I went to the meeting in Oriental. Anyway, long story short, I got there. And for some reason, after the meeting, Pastor just said, you know what, let's share testimonies. And I thought, but I was compelled, you know, when you just know that you're supposed to do something, I don't, then I didn't really like to share my story or my testimony, but I came out that day. I just started a journey of like quitting alcohol and all of those things at the time. I came out, I shared the testimony, and I was walking to my seat, and Pia, I meet up the more, and they both said to me, I should come back. And I'm thinking, <laughs> there's no way she put herself on my head, I don't want to hear, no way she, no way she, I don't hear anything. But anyways, I came back. And as Moses says, you know, I feel like the Lord is asking us to pray over you. And I'm thinking, okay. And he said I should heal, and he knelt down. And um, he stretched his hand, but then he stopped, and then he called everybody out. And he called everybody in the audience and said, you know what? All of you should come out. Everybody, put your hands on this girl. And about 15 people laid their hands on me. And he kept praying and praying and praying and praying over me. It was almost like that was the moment where God commissioned me for the work that was ahead. I didn't understand it yet. And I got up from that place and everything changed. Everything changed. So sitting here again at Eden is very emotional for me because in a way, everything started from this altar. At the rent house, I'm not sitting in those rooms. You get the point. Everything started from this altar. So if you are doubting that God is a good God, tonight I hope that as I share, you would realize that His consistent nature is goodness. His consistent nature is faithfulness. His nature does not change regardless of your circumstance. His nature does not change regardless of the events that are going on around in your life. He is consistent in his ways. That's why he is called God. Um, so I just wanted to show this video. Somehow, somehow, along the line, I found myself writing a book called Abba. That was only planned for my life, but you know, how God does his things. Um, so I'm just going to share this video real quick and then we'll go into it. We, we grew up in, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but growing up, my mother was an intercessor. You know, we used to fast. My mother fasted maybe half a year out of 365 days in a year. I don't think I ever saw her eating breakfast as a child. You know, I started fasting when I was five, for God's sake. That's the kind of family I grew up in. You know, demon destroyer, all those things. We did there. But then I realized that God wanted more of my experience or from my experience. He wanted me to know who he is for who he truly is. I don't even know if that's English, but I've said it. You know, he wanted me to experience him from a place of communion and fellowship, not from what they told me, or from what, you know, she said, he said. He wanted me to come into that place where I get to see him naked, and he sees me naked. Vulnerability between father and child. He wanted me to come close, to understand him, to see him beyond what I have been told. Because only then, only when you come into that knowledge and understanding of God as Father, can you truly say as a Christian, you have come into the place of rest. And you see, the funny thing is the enemy tries to, he will try everything to make sure that we do not understand that side of God. Because it's a threat to the devil. It's almost like having my father as the president of Nigeria. There's nothing anybody in this nation wants to tell me. Who are you? You know what I mean? When I understand that uh, it's my pop that is sitting on the number one seat in the nation, it means that I have, I'm guarded, I'm surrounded, as in I day, my word people say I, I full ground. 
you know. So the enemy will try everything possible for you not to experience the fatherhood nature of God by building this wall of lies and condemnation and guilt and all sorts of things that are thrown to us as Christians, preventing us from coming into that place of understanding and seeing God as a dad. God is mighty. He's powerful. He's, he's <laughs> God is, I, I can't explain it in a sentence, but at the same time, God is so soft. He is so generous. But most said, his heart is so large. He is so tender. He is so merciful. He is so faithful. He is so gracious. He is so kind. And when you come into that understanding, you are able to be victorious on any way, in any level. Because you know that you are truly a child of the one who owns the entire universe. God's father whose nature comes from a place of, I know that you will mess up, but I have gone ahead to make sure that regardless of what you do, I would have this sorted. His father whose nature comes from his responsibility to us as his children, making sure that we are okay. I have two kids, I'm a mom, I'm not a dad, I'm a mom, but I know that my children, are, they can do whatever they like because at the back of their minds, mom sees there. They will know that when they get home, there's food on the table, there's clothes to wear, there's always shelter, there's something regardless because they have the confidence in me as their mother. That's the place God is trying to get us to as Christians. It's not enough for us to quote the Bible. It's not enough for us to stand on pulpits and preach the word. It's not enough for us to do miracles and anointing services. God is calling for more. He's asking for fellowship, true, genuine communion, where you become a reflection of him because of how much time you have spent in his presence. That when people see you, there is no doubt that they can say that this one is a child of God. Not as not child of God as they throw around the place. No, no, this one that God became for real because you are reflecting everything that he is. You are a carrier of his nature. That's the level God is calling us as Christians to come to. And so many people, so many people are in pain and suffering and depression and all sorts of circumstances because they've truly not come to that understanding of God as their father. Because when you understand God as your father, you will see how much he loves you. A love that cannot be separated by anything ever in this world. I didn't understand it because my dad is, my deadly dad is, he's very great. He's a quiet person. He's a typical African father. Doesn't talk much. Only the you know, school fees paid years. I didn't say years. He then goes years. That's about it. If you don't, if you don't really, father does not come out of here. I said, no, 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 good night. No, no, no. He was never really, he was a doctor, a doctor but so he was never really around. So I found it very difficult to articulate when God says, see me as your dad. Because what I knew was what was displayed by my earthly father. And I was seeing God as that person. But then every time I realized that he was always there, you know, I would do something silly, you'll be there. I would do something good, you'll be there. My back will be against the wall, he'll be there. When I'm prosperous, he'll be there. When I'm not prosperous, God was just constantly, constantly there. Even in the times when I would turn my back against him, he's like, you know what, you will go or you will come back. And then I began to ask questions that, okay, there has to be more to this God that I know. There has to be more to his nature that we have been taught. And he began to show me so much more about what it means for him to call, call himself my father. If you look through the Bible, every time Jesus explained or described himself, he always mentioned that he was the son of God. Because he wanted us to understand that God is our father first before anything. Because a father has so many branches that they play. And when you begin to see God as father, it's easy for you to see him as anything else. 
It's easy for you to see him as provider. It's easy for you to see him as healer. It's easy for you to see him as shelter. Because it is his responsibility as a dad to be those things to you. But if your initial notion as God is God of fire, it will be very difficult for you to reconcile that when he says, come let me on you. You will shield yourself away because you think you will be burnt. So we are in that season where God is calling us to understand his fatherhood nature. Because there's just so much going on in the world these days. A lot of suicide, a lot of all sorts of things. But then when you come to the rest of God's fatherhood nature, you know that you are guarded under the shadow of the wing of your dad. And regardless of what is happening, you are covered. That's the beauty of God as dad. That's the beauty of him being our pillar of hope. I looked up the dictionary meaning of hope, and it says, a positive state of mind based on an expectation of a positive outcome with respect to events in one's life. But then God said, no, that's English dictionary. Let me tell you what hope means for me. And he says, for you as a child of God, hope means an expectation of positive outcome irrespective of the events or circumstances. The English dictionary says, your mind has to be positive so that you expect a positive outcome with respect to the events, meaning that the circumstance has to be okay for you to have hope. So God is saying, regardless of the events, that's what hope means for him as our father. What does it mean to see God as Father? What does it mean when you look at your dad? What does, it, what, what does relationship entail? Vulnerability comes to the top of the list. That is the one thing the devil does not want to hear, that we are vulnerable before the Father. Because it means that we will get help every time we call. It means that we will get anything, we will get covering every time. So the enemy will shield that truth from you that it's okay to be bare and naked before the Lord regardless. It's the most important thing as a Christian is your ability to be vulnerable as God's child. Now if you see God as this mighty fireway person, it will be hard for you to trust this fireway person to be naked before them. But from communion and relationship, when you see him as dad, it becomes easier because you know him, you trust him, you've walked with him so closely, it becomes easy for you to be vulnerable with God. Vulnerability is the greatest strength you would have as a child of God. Because it means if I'm vulnerable before the one who is the greatest judge, what else? Who else? I mean, the one person who it's supposed to be the one that can take me to hell fire. I'm just naked before the person. Then there's nothing else. And because I'm naked before that person, that one, the person I'm even naked before has already gone ahead of me and paid the price. Then really and truly, what do I have to be ashamed of? So if you truly want to see God's fatherhood nature as a Christian, you must be willing to be naked. It's not like he doesn't know, he knows. But he wants you to be willing to be vulnerable before him. So the 100% dependence on the father is the proof that you are truly his child. I'm not saying one leg in today, another leg out tomorrow, that in that no. God wants to be an in to see of your life. every aspect of your life. He wants to know the very details of what you do. The style that you put on your hair, the clothes you wear. It's, it sounds ridiculous, but I promise you, that's the kind of guy he is. Okay. I wasn't supposed to wear this coming today. He said, ah, I think that this thing I'm wearing is not all right. I should go and change. That's the kind of father God is. As I see, called me a couple of days to my birthday. She said, ah, I was just, that, at that point, I was like, ah, God, I need to do my nails, you know, this person that I'm turning, we got to go into it, you know. 
with Miles and Valor. <laughs> but then I just had so much to do. And the book was launching. The thought of going to go and doing nails for 10k was just outrageous. Like, I need that 10k to pay, you know, food or fruits or something. I just needed to put all my money together to make sure that this book comes out. And then Pia just called me and said, hey, you already had a dream. <laughs> I said, well, what's the Lord saying? She said, in the dream, I took you to do your nails, your lashes, your hair. Your... I said, Father, you love me. <laughs> so when I was ready, sent me money. And I said, Lord, you know, you are a good father. It's, it's ridiculous and it's minute, but that's who he is. He is very intentional about every detail of your life. Why? Because his intention is to make you just like him. So he has to be involved in the process. If he's not involved in the process, then you can't come out looking like him, or acting like him, or behaving like him. When people see my kids, apart from the crazy resemblance, there are some attributes and some traits that you can identify. Say, I've already gone this with them. Good ones and bad ones. But last, last, the identity is there. So when God says, let me be your dad, it's not simply because he wants to scold you. That's part of the discipline we'll come to that. But because he wants to make you like him. And so you will be very involved in every detail of your life. God is so involved there. I can't, if I, if I start to share some stories, you guys will laugh. They are funny, but it just shows how involved he is. Let me share one that's quite ridiculous. In my, in my, <laughs> I like to spend time alone, so when I do that, I often ship my children to their grandma. One week, two weeks, one month, two months. <laughs> so this time I was by myself, and I was just saying to God, you know, <laughs> God, and I'm lonely, it's not like I miss them, but I don't really miss them. But at the same time, this house is too quiet. And I feel like I'm just alone. And I went to the kitchen and I dished myself food to eat. And he says, okay, you're lonely, how about we eat together? I said, wow, which kind of daytime witchcraft? As well as I'm eating, like, are you kidding me? And he says, no, already, let's, let's eat together. So I said, okay, if I tell people the story, they'll think I'm mad. So I put two spoons in the plate cups of water, went to my bed, sat down. When the food was almost finished, I was like, this guy, I mean, take this food, make a jump my food. But then, the next day, he's asked me to do it again. I didn't get it. I did not understand it. Until days later, it was like the Holy Spirit just slapped my head down. All he wanted to do for me in that moment was to communicate and commune with me, just like he did for the woman at the well. He says, already, it wasn't about the food that I, I don't want to eat your food. I just wanted to spend time with you. Because I was in that phase where I couldn't find myself to read my Bible or study as usual or pray as usual. I said, okay, if you will not read, if you will not pray, let me jump. So God's fatherhood's nature helps him understand where you are at the time that you are and responds to you in that exact way. Like Elijah, see like Elijah, he was like an Iranian Elijah. Elijah, and a fight, 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 finish. You know, got to the wilderness or desert, and he was he was upset at God. God said, "Well, I know that you're upset, but it's like there's something else that's wrong with you. Make a move, jump first." And a couple of things will think that God will be so mad because Elijah is showing mistrust. In him. How dare you? I just gave you the boldness to do all these amazing things you did. I came back complaining. But because of the fatherhood nature, because of the father that he is, he saw that he needed to meet him at that place. He understood exactly where his mind was in that time and exactly what Elijah needed to keep moving for the next 40 days.
experience an experience with God, you have to be willing to fellowship and commune with Him. It's not automatic, it doesn't fall from the sky. It's a conscious effort and a conscious process. And it starts with your heart. What is the state of your heart towards the Father tonight? Do you just see Him as the God that provides when you need something? Or the God that is here to kill all the demons on your behalf and all the witches in your bridge? The state of your heart as a child of God should always be in line and in tune with God's fatherhood nature. Because God wants to pour these desires in your heart so that you can manifest here on earth. But if you're not in tune and in line with God, how are you wanting it? How are you wanting it? An important part of being a Christian is that the willingness of your heart is in tune with God. Your heart is in tune with God. Because let me tell you, we are in that season what this thing, this manifestation of the sons of God on earth, you know, that scripture. But then, we can't really manifest God's power without being like God. And to be like Him, you have to be willing to spend time with Him. You have to be willing to commune with Him. You have to be to have sweet fellowship with him. We're not used to that culture in Africa because our parents have busy schedules and also are the next generation parents by the exact same thing. But God is calling us for more tonight. He's looking for sons and daughters that have their hearts tuned to the frequency of heaven. That their desires become one with him. So that everything you do, everywhere you go, you are reflecting his kingdom. You are portraying what he wants. You are doing exactly what he needs you to do at every moment and hour of the day. That's what it means to be a child of God. Only then can God say, Come into my inheritance when he trusts you enough that you are reflecting and you've become like him. We wonder why God isn't giving us assignments. We wonder why God isn't opening the bands of heaven and pouring down all his blessings. How far are you? Where are you with him? Are you reflecting his nature? Are you reflecting his faithfulness to other people around you? Are you even being faithful to the little that he's given to you as your dad? Are you showing grace and mercy to the around you, just like he has to you as father? Are you making the necessary sacrifice as a child would for their dad? This is what God is calling us to. I didn't think this would happen in my lifetime. I didn't think I would ever write a book about God. I'm a business career person. I didn't think it would ever happen. But then, I wasn't going to experience that sweetness of God as Father and not let the world know how beautiful He is as that. God is saying, Come, let me cover you. Let me be the one that you rest on. Let me be the assurance that you need because it's my responsibility as your Father to be that. But so many times my back was against the wall. So many times. So many times I wanted to give up. So many times I thought there's no need. There's no point. But then God would dip his hands into the middle on the bottom of the pit and pull me out. Because he's like, you're my child. You're not going anywhere. That's how beautiful God is. That's what it means to be a father. And this is for the men in the house. Your responsibility, number one responsibility as a father to your child is covering. And it starts from you. What you display 
to the is what made you come. And every time you want to displace any of this nature, 